was like a bad joke. Hadn't heard from the bastard in 20 years, and his wife, a woman I never met, gets my number and calls. I didn't even know he'd been in the damn hospital. Hadn't thought about him much in years. Why would I? He split. But she calls and I go, and so what? Do you know where the funeral home is? It's right up here on the right. Nothing. And where do I catch the bus coming back? Catch you right here. Thanks. Would have been nice, I suppose, had I felt something. But I didn't. At least... Hello? Not at first. Hello? So she leads me down this hall, where they have him in this room. It was cold. You could feel it through the door. Just give me a moment to make sure he's presentable. Presentable? I'm thinking, do you think he gives a shit, lady, if he's presentable? He's dead. Then I go in, and the stench is horrid. And I guess I said so, because she gives me this look, like I should have some respect for the smell of the dead or something. So she goes out, and after 20 years, there he is. So I tell him what I think. I said, You should have been there, you old dead bastard. You should have been there. Anyway, I don't know why I'm talking to him. But I had all these questions, right? Like, why'd he split? Then I go to touch him, and behind the neck he's still warm. I felt like I could feel the life leaving him, like somehow some part of him was still there. Then I opened his eyes, and he wasn't there. Then I'm just looking at him, and out of the blue I remember the time I broke my leg, and him coming in while they were setting it, and the doctor trying to kick him out, but he wouldn't go. That's, That's my son, son, he said. Then all of these memories are swimming in my head, like, all of a sudden, I'm not even in the room anymore. We're riding your bike for a few weeks now, okay? I'm back 20 years, and I'm six years old again. And I'm thinking of how I idolized him when I was a kid, and how it used to be that he could do anything, and how I knew he could do anything, and how I wanted to be just like him when I grew up. <laughs> you know, when you get older, Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts teach you how to do this stuff and you get a merit badge just for lighting a fire. Can you imagine that? Anyway, the thing is, I'm standing there and I'm dreaming and then the lady comes in and I notice I've got these tears running down my face. Take all the time that you need. And I'm feeling naked too because I'm crying like a child in front of this lady. And then I realized that the nothingness that I felt when I went in, it had turned to something and I was missing him. Then I was thinking about why I'd never changed my name to my stepdad's. It's like, I'm the last male and somehow that's always mattered somewhere. Bloodlines, I don't know. Anyway, finally I remember the book my buddy had given me that I took, because no matter what my old man did, I was going to read a prayer over him at least. And my friend had said, no matter what my father did, I owed him because he gave me the gift of life. And I remember I said, great, some gift. But then I get there and I see him and suddenly I realize that it was an excuse, you know? I don't know, I suppose I blame the guy for not being there. And as much as I wanted him to be responsible for all that I had lost and none of what I gained, I suddenly realized that he did what he did simply because he couldn't do anything else. And that I really did owe him. Anyway. Then I read my prayer over him. And he walketh in all the sins of his father, which he had done before And him. I was getting kind of scared, too, when I was and reading his it. his heart was not perfect with the Lord. Because it felt like something big was happening. And he did worse than all that were before him. Lord, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. 
All I know is after all of it, I suddenly found myself standing there in this... this moment of grace. And suddenly, everything's fine. Hey, it's you again. Yeah. Yeah, I think so.